know, finishing them with what I witnessed. And at the time that I finished the statement, I had already seen that Senzo had been shot at on the chest. <coughs> but the sequence of the statement does not justify what you are saying. To the person, that will be reducing what I'm finishing to them into writing. So your final answer is that you did not see where the deceased was shot. I did see where he was shot at. So I'm, I'm sorry, I was trying to say to you that you did not see when he was shot at the time when the shot went off. Give me the things I'm trying to show you. He only see it after he was injured. Yeah, but it is indeed so, yes. Let us go to paragraph 9 of your statement. It is the page before that. Paragraph 9. Yes. The last paragraph. Okay. The page before the last one. It should be page 3, at the, at the bottom of page 3, the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. Right? Where it reads as follows, and I quote, the description of the su suspect is as follows. Slender, tall, dark, in complexion. One yeah, man. wearing a brownish leather jacket. Um, the he, wearing he had dreadlocks on. He's the first suspect, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that, that describes the first, or oh, that talks about the first yes, suspect that I described. Yes, the on the head shot, this. In fact, in fact, in fact uh, sorry, in fact, has, that one is um, the second suspect that I'm referring to, the one that was tall. No, no way to jacket it on the official. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, the one that was wearing a brown uh, jacket is the short one. The short one, yeah. Yeah, it's the short one who had dreadlocks and a, and a head. Hmm. And um, the tall one, dark, very dark in complexion, is the second suspect. The last page at the top of that page, it reads as follows in my quote, I can be able to identify the one of them. He had left on the scene. No one was shot except Senzo, those quotations. Yes. That's correct. When you were stating that you can be able to identify one of them, which one was amongst them that you were going to be able to identify? Yes, so Now the person that was uh, taking my statement asked me as to whether will I be able to point out um, or identify these people that had access to the house. And I didn't um, say that I won't be able um, to point them out if it so happens that I see them again. So between the two intruders, the one with red dogs and the one who was tall, the second in food. Which one amongst them were you saying that you can be able to identify? The I was back home about if the baby will come one lunch. I was going to be able to um, identify them if the both of them were to be brought uh, before me. So let us not try to run away from the question. The, the, where, where I met is as follows. You say in your statement, I can be able to identify one of them. So I'm asking you, which one were you saying that you can identify one of them between the two, the one with red dogs and the tall one? So, and John is saying, which if baby Vela Wabi, the Sarand Venga was back home. So then Cantorum was in Comboeta, causing him born in the lake or to it. Joy and she. Now, um, as I've already said, if the two of them were to be brought before me, I would then be able to identify them. Now, opportunistically, coming here at court, I was then able to see one of them, and I pointed him out. Sir, so for the sake of progress, I'm not going to repeat this question for you. I will leave it for argument at the lesser stage. Understood? Yes, yeah, sir. Well. My lord, with the name of the court, may I request that the 
Statement by the witness which was made on the 27th of October, 2014, we handed in as exhibit V1. Okay. So, you remember that I had asked you regarding the statement that you made that is exhibit V1, and you told this court that you did not see where the disease was. I mean, sorry, sorry. Remember that I asked you about the, the question whether were you able where, to see where the first shot that was fired in the kitchen landed. You said you could not see. Yes, yes, that's correct. I'm going to refer you to the transcribed record of the evidence of Zandi Le Kuman. It is on page 52 of the transcribed record. Page 52. The other court again. The transcribed record. Line 13. Line 13. It is dated the 18th of July 2023. That is the evidence in chief of the witness. The prosecutor is trying to assist us with that statement. It is page 52 of the transcribed record. I'll start at 9-5. We, we, we have faith, uh, page 52? Yes, I'll start at line number 5. This is the evidence of Zandi Le Kumal when you are being led by the state council. The following question was asked at line 4. The state council asked the witness to proceed with the evidence. Then the response at line six is as follows, and I quote. When the fire went off, I then heard something hitting the floor. And then a spark went off, and then it hit, and then it hit me on my foot. Sorry, um, we, we got lost here. We are in page 52, and that line, it's... It's not reflected here. The proceedings of the 18th of July, 2023. Yeah, it's written the 24th of July. We've got the 24th of July, 2023 here. But this reads the... Yeah, let me just continue for the sake of progress. Yes. Yes, it's not now. It reads as follows. The response, when the farm went off, I then heard something hitting the floor, and then a spark went off, and then hit me on my foot. Close quotation. Yeah, I'm Yes, I'm listening. Right. Then there was a question by my colleague, Advocate Madoy. Just a minute. If you say felt something hitting the floor, you could see where it hit the floor. Yes, I can see that. We'll then go to 913. When I heard that hitting the floor, it so happened that you men also heard it, so that we heard the same thing. I ran into the bathroom and he ran into the bedroom. Close quotation. I hear that. What is your comment about what Zandi Le Kumalo testified about? About the first shot hitting the floor? And she running into the bathroom and you running into the bedroom. Ah, uh, no, 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 where, where it has to do with her running and getting into the bathroom. Uh, and myself, running into the bathroom. Um, getting into the bedroom. Uh, running and getting into the bathroom. And myself, running and getting into the bedroom. I cannot ascertain that. I didn't see her running into the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And secondly, even after this movie, let's see this movie, let's play Leila. And I'm going to tell you that I'm going to even when we had come back from the hospital, I did not notice where the bullet hit or the spot which was hit by the bullet. Now, um, what I know is that she actually showed us um, a, a chip on the skin that is on the, on the, on the, just on above the ankle or the front portion of the of the of the of the food in in that ankle uh, area of the food it was it was just a superficial 
a superficial kind of, a, of an injury. Just, a, just an abrasion. It wasn't big. That's, that's what she showed us. So you did not see when the gunshot went off and hitting the floor in the kitchen? And the bonanga, the one who was shooting, 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 the I did not witness that. We only heard it from her at the time that she was now showing us that she sustained a superficial injury just on the uh, ankle, the front portion of the ankle of her right foot. So you disavow both what you said in your statement, Exhibit V1, that the disease was shot on the chest, and what Zandi the Kumada is saying in her evidence in chief, that when the shot went off and hit the floor, you were also present. You felt the same thing. Please, I don't think it's correct to say he's disavowing that. Mm. Uh, when he stated that the decision to change was in that retrospect. Yes. Inferential reasoning. You see a person who had a white T-shirt, he had no blood stain. Subsequently, you see the same person with a blood stain T-shirt and he's lying on the floor. Inferential reasoning. He didn't see it. After the event, he, he sees it, that this person was shot on the chest. So, yes, I do agree. Yeah. But if you agree with me that the, the manner that the statement is documented, that is Exhibit B1, in relation to the injury on the chest, it is not documented in the sense that it's something that you saw after you had the gun shot. Yeah, same time. I, I would not have seen immediately when um, he was infected with that uh, with that bullet. I, I, I couldn't even right now. I cannot even explain it as to how exactly it came about that he sustained that injury on the chest. I am saying that. Only after the transpiration of the incident was I then able to finish the statement based on what happened, what had already happened. Now, now, the last time I checked, we were together in the kitchen. Um, and there's, there's, there's some kind of a demonstration with two fingers equal. You know, that are We were together when the firearm went off and I fled to the bedroom and upon my return from the bedroom, that is when I realized that he had already sustained the shot and he was lying down in the dining room. Let us move to photo 15 of the When the disease was fighting with the second intruder. Can you again demonstrate using that photo? Where was the intruder? The second intruder. Obege na ina epege na paga tindi. Usendo emla epege na bui. Mina gimla epele ngwa sendi. Now, um, three spots have just been um, um, reflected on this um, picture to try and depict where Senzo was. The first one, just next to the door there, um, close to um, the cabinet at the end of the cabinet, that is the bottom end of the cabinet. That is where the, the, the first light had been shown. This is where, and I quote, this is where um, the intruder was facing the kitchen. And then, um, and then the light moved a few inches away from that particular spot, <coughs> linearly, linearly went down. And that is where Senzo was. A spot was uh, shown there. That is where Senzo was. And then it moved to the right or adjacent to Senzo a few inches again. And that is where I was. That is now in accordance with this. Where was the first intruder? The one with the dogs? They were somewhere Somewhere in Vahwitla. They were somewhere there at that particular spot there. Um, behind us, and the spot that is being uh, uh, pointed at is somewhere in Yeah, it could be somewhere even outside of the borders of this picture. But he's indicating that 
They were behind us. Was he behind the pieces? Ah, no man, he showed exact cause in Pegeli, but um, see, do nula. I cannot be exact about that because I was facing in the opposite direction. But then, you know, the the commotion was behind it, behind us. I mean, the second, in, sorry, the first intruder, the one with red dogs, was it behind the pieces or was it behind all of you as well standing there? No, we were waiting, you said, because we were speculating. They were behind us. That is myself and Santo, because we were facing that direction and they were behind us. I mean, the one with red dogs in relation to Senzo, where was he? We were behind Senzo, the deceased. The best thing about it, the best thing about it, so far, so far, because Tina's pegging. Obviously, we don't know how to send about it. We shall never get right, but to send about it, we shall never get left send about it. So no man needs to plan cars because by and good, by which way shall we make a stand? No, 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 Kelly, no, no, stand. So I'm going to shoot why move around and but the way I'm about it. I can, I cannot be able to explain how they were moving because they were behind us, and um, that is the very person that I am referring to that they were. Behind. But what I am saying is that they were behind us. Even at the time that he was being um, fought against by Makumalo, Zandi and them, as they were uh, assaulting him, there was movement that was happening behind us. Therefore, I cannot tell exactly behind us where he was. No, no don't ask me. When it comes to that, I'm, I'm interested, yeah, I'm interested in, 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 in these people. You have demonstrated where the second intruder was. You have demonstrated where the disease was. You also indicated where you were at that time. I mean, now one by one. Also, in relation to the to the disease, where you had pointed, where the disease was. Where was the first intruder in relation to the disease? Only yeah. that one. Yeah, is on one position exactly what Umbu Pigi Pegel is facing the second second intrude. Nangs on one Aranja, what exactly named our group. Now, how, how would I have exactly seen um, uh, or clearly seen the exact position of the first intruder when we accosted or when we were faced with um, the second intruder? Because then was the good to save our own because Nangs on the same door. Mm. Well, all, all I am sure of is that he was behind us because I could hear the noise or the commotion that was happening, the crutch and the sound of the crutch and as well as the utensils, the, the cabinet being opened. That's, that, that's all I am sure of. So what you are saying is that you and the deceased were facing the second intruder? Yes, yes, yes. At that time when the gun went off, we had faced, both of us, we were facing um, the second intruder. Okay. So, the first intruder was behind you? Yes. Yes. You also told this court in your evidence in chief that at that time, the deceased had pinned the second intruder into the ward. Which ward were, were you referring to? I tell you more, sister. I'm just referring to the spot just next to the door. It's just been shown next to the door there. Okay. You also told the court in your evidence in chief that the deceased had grabbed or held the hands of the second intruder upwards. You confirm that? Yeah, that is that is so, yes. I'm going to refer you to the postmortem report, which is <coughs> Exhibit N of the record. On page three of the postmortem report, A513. It's A513 in brackets. As a court case, we have previously objected against the use of uh, documents compiled by expert witnesses. Um, and and we, we're going to again raise that objection. This witness is a lay person. He cannot comment on the evidence of this paper. You want the witness to comment on what? Postmortem. I just want to listen. No, sorry. Mm -hmm. I just want the witness to listen, my God. To I, listen. Yeah, to listen yeah. to what? Listen to what? <laughs> to the to the findings by the doctor. Oh, I see. 
to the findings by the daughter. Okay. Only listen. And just, listen. Just, just listen. Just okay. listen. Okay. Just okay. understand. Okay. Okay. So you must just listen. Okay. So what they do too. Yes, let's go. I'm going to refer you to Roman figure 4 of the postmortem report under external appearance of the body and condition of limbs. Uh, external? External appearance of the body and condition of limbs. I'm going to start at number 2. Thank you. Situated over the right anterior chest wall, one centimeter to the right of the midline and 135 centimeter above the heel is a three centimeter by 1.5 centimeter oval shaped lacerated wound. So we've just been uh, handed the file here. We cannot see where you are. On page three of the postmortem report. Okay. Line number two. Yes, Roman figure four, under external appearance of the body and condition of limbs. Thank you, we found it. Yes. Situated over the right anterior chest wall, one centimeter to the right of the midline and one three five centimeter above the head is a three centimeter by 1.5 centimeter oval shaped lacerated wound. Yes, 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 we can see that. Yeah. Okay. There is a semicircular abrasion situated over the superior and inferior aspect measuring 0 0,3 cm superiorly and 0 0,5 cm inferiorly. The wound edges appear shaped, situated just below the skin, blackened granular material consistent with gunshot residue, are noted in the underlying soft tissue. This wound is consistent with <coughs> contact wound entrance wound. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yes, I can see that. Right. Let us turn to page four of the postmortem report under paragraph three, where it reads as follows, and I quote, there is a 1.3 centimeter by 0 0.7 centimeter oval shaped lacerated wound <coughs> situated over the right posterior chest wall, 4.5 centimeter to the right of the midline and one to six centimeter above the heel. Open bracket, this is consistent with bullet exit wound. Those brackets, those quotation. Yes, that yeah, is the exit wound. There's a exit, diagram exit, exit, also exit, indicating the wounds. Yes, I can see that. Yes, there is a diagram indicating the wounds and wound track. Wound two entrance, wound three exit, uh -huh. and wound track, wound two and three. You also see that. Yeah, we got one. That's correct. I can see that. But what is point. of interest to me is the following. So, if your evidence is to be believed. The deceased is fighting with the second intruder. He is holding the second intruder's hand upwards. How then did the deceased sustain the gunshot wound, the entrance to the chest, and the exit to the to the to the to the back if he was fighting with the second intruder? Who was not in possession of the firearm. Can you explain that? Uh, this is my The witness is very clear. He's, you asked him a question where did the projectile land? You said we call it bullet. And he says, I'm God's one, we're born. I'm born. I didn't see it. He doesn't even know. He just heard a sound, a deafening sound. That's his evidence. He never said when the deceased was pinning the right upper arm of whatever intruder, the gunshot rang. Never said it. That's not the evidence. Let me rephrase, may I rephrase the question. At what stage did you, did you hear the sound of a gunshot at the time when the disease was fighting with the second intruder? The kitchen, the kitchen, now the kitchen, come We were in the kitchen. We were in the kitchen when uh, the firearm went off. You had said the second intruder Sorry, the first intruder, the one with dreadlocks, was behind me. Yeah, but one It isn't it, isn't it so. Be, be, behind you, singular, behind you, plural. Behind you and the disease. Should you hear? way, no, no move. Yes. That's correct.
You told the squad that you did not see where the gunshot landed. But the when first I was gunshot that you heard, the single one. I didn't even see the direction, the direction it took. All that I heard was that noise. Even after the incident, I'm Zang Boni, Nalaya Shako, Nitam, Loma Bonalis, Kundis, or Poya Bonalit, Kundis. As I have already said, that even after the incident, I did not see um, the spot at which the bullet hit, only when the police um, were pointing to ask where the bullet actually hit. That's when I could see. You know, after that single gunshot that you had, if the deceased had a fight again with the first intruder. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't witness that. You see, um, when the gunshot uh, goes off, everybody wants to run for cover. So I did not know, I mean, I didn't see where he went to, ran to. Yes, I'm uh, still wanting him to listen. That's what you said to him. Yes, I'm, I'm done. Now you're asking him questions. <laughs> no, it was in I don't forget. <laughs> it was in respect of the no, He said to me, I want him to listen. Yes. Now, when I'm thinking, oh, let's listen. Now you come in. With questions. It was, it was in respect of the postmortem report. Oh, what? It was in respect of the postmortem report. I see. Yes, there were further up questions, and I was asking him those questions. Okay. We'll now go to the statement of Nontan Takeli Kumada. It's A17. I'm going to read paragraph 8 and 9 of Exhibit 17. Paragraph 8 reads as follows, and I quote, The one suspect with a gun was threatening the people in the living room, and the tall skinny one left the bedroom door and went to the living room where his friend was. I then remembered that my child was in the other bedroom, and I opened the door to go and see what was happening. Then, I then saw my mom struggling with the tall skinny guy, and sends on Togo and two men that were busy struggling with the gunman. I then saw my mom struggling with the tall you, skinny you. guy and sends on Togo and two men that were busy struggling with the gunman. I then tried to help my mother to push the, the tall guy. I did not know or see what was happening behind me. I only heard gunshots. Uh. Paragraph 9 reads as follows, and I quote, I jumped backwards and my sister said something hit her leg and she thought she was shot. I then saw Senzo running towards me, trying to grab me. I grabbed him, but I could see that he was weak. He yep. fell into my arms and I saw a spot of blood on his leg and I turned him over. I saw a lot of blood on his chest. He fell over the couch and I held him while screaming for help. <coughs> At that time, the gunman was still in the house and my son was standing next to him. Did you at some point struggle with the gunman, the second, the first intruder? That is you, Senzo, and it was a situation. Jovan, you should say, I want to statement. Long, you should say, I want to 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 say, I want I would, I would wish for this person that had uh, uh, finished the statement to come and um, explain this uh, honorable court about the um, a lot of blood that she had seen because or that he or she has seen that uh, that particular person must then come and explain to the court because as I have already indicated I could only uh, see the sprinkles or the spots of blood and not uh, you know a lot of blood because the statements are like, now, uh, that very statement that you are referring to, uh, uh, me to, um, is, is as good as that, um, the, the, the material that was written by that Soweto guy, um, which is worthless, um, given the fact that uh, Mtogo is not a hostile person. 
fighting. So it's not a person that likes fighting. And I'm going to go to the cell. The only thing in the Kumbla and Jutum to Wang and Muva and Mepuma Balega, Wapuma Meshoin, Wapuma Baleg, Machuapuma Baleg, so they would be able. I am the Kumbu. I do not, I do not remember seeing Togo fighting. Because um, what I can remember, even he was from behind me, what happened was at an earliest opportunity in Togo, um, um, you know, uh, fled or, or fled out of out, out of the house. Um, that that which is which is which is being spoken here, or that which is now being narrated in the statement, it's, I, I, I I don't know it. I just don't know it. In fact, in fact, perhaps I should I should I should fix that one. Not that I do not remember him fighting. Let me say with certainty. Togo did not fight. So you not chabula the statement. You must not call us big with telling. Um, you guys are such a I would, I would really be happy if the statement was to be folded and be put aside. Whoever finished this statement should come and explain this uh, nonsense that's written mm. here. Yes. Once we're inside the house on the 26th of October 2014, did the police arrive? I guess. Whilst you were inside the house, before you went to the hospital, did the police arrive? I only remember upon a return. Mm -hmm. Only upon a return. Before um, only upon a return from taking Sanzo to the hospital. Not before we went to the hospital. Did you see any police vehicle in the vicinity before you left? Personally, there is no police vehicle that I uh, noticed or see. I only remember the presence of the police um, upon our return from the hospital, and that was um, during the dawn of the day or in the dawn of the day. In your evidence in chief, you also referred this court to a head which was discovered upon your return from the hospital. It is so. You also told this court that that head was worn by the first intruder. Yes, it is so. Do you know or did you see when it came off the first intruder's head? I did not witness that. But you yourself said, do you wear a cap? Do you wear a cap? Mina? Do you Me? wear a cap in your no. lifetime? Or you when wear I a cap? I cap. 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 Not a cap. I would at times put some uh, some head on, but not a cap. Not not that sort. Or not that type of a, of a head. Like the one that is sort of uh, hard in texture. Mm -hmm. um, I would usually, if I have to put a head, it should be a softer one, lighter one. So, like so you are saying that you don't wear a head similar to the one that was found? Never. Never. <laughs> never. never. <laughs> I've never. I've never put on a head like that that looks like the old man's head. Never. Since my father. Ever since I was born. <laughs> yeah. Is it correct that on the 29th of October 2014, you attended an identity kit which was conducted by Warrant Officer Stian Gam. On the 29th? On the 29th of October. Yes, even though I, can, I cannot be certain about the dates, mm -hmm. there was a statement we were called for that purpose. According to this witness, Warad Officer Stenkamp, you were the third person to be interviewed. Do you confirm that? I cannot say um, for number one was I on the line for being interviewed. All that I can remember is that we did go um, to the police for that purpose. Warad Officer Stenkamp says the following. The third person to be interviewed, in fact, she says, the third person I interviewed was 
to murder my dad, who was much traumatized. Yeah, when you mentioned that. No, yeah, he's, he's, he's telling the right. truth. He's telling the truth. I wasn't okay. He saw the scuffling between suspect A and the deceased. Between? Suspect A and the deceased. After hearing the gunshots, he ran off to one of the rooms. Yeah. Yes. He gave a similar description of suspect A. I showed him Kelly and her sister's compilation, and he was satisfied with the ID kit. He could not compile the second suspect. Is it correct that you told Guarat Officer Stenkam during the interview that you saw the scuffling between suspect A and the deceased? Yes. Yes. Did you further tell the warrant officer that you could not combine the second suspect? No. So, I was looking for a I'm actually riddled with this one that I won't be able to um, identify the second one. You should remember that I did indicate that on the statement that was finished in Fort Lewis, that I was able to identify the tall one. You told this court that the first suspect was wearing a hat. Yes, it is so. You further told this court that the second suspect was wearing a hoodie jacket. It is indeed so. That is not what Mtozi Sitwada told this court. Yeah, I am some statement to so. As I've already uh, indicated that I'm here in court to come and finish this court with my statement pertaining what is it that I have personally uh, witnessed. As far as what Mtogo is saying in his statement, or whether um, whatever it is that is being spoken by Kelly in, in her statement, that has got nothing to do with me. Yes. Mine is to tell this honorable court about what I personally have witnessed about this incident. It was just want to point out that. That is not correct. We're still waiting for the details of what Mtoko said. But what counsel is saying that that is not what Mtoko said is not correct. Still waiting for the details as to in which respect is Mtoko not correct. Yes, counsel. Yes, I was still going there. Thank you. Mtoko is told this court that. The first intruder, the one with red locks, was wearing a hoodie jacket. As a court, please, Mona, that, that is not correct. <laughs> that is what was stated in the statement, and he stated that there was a miscommunication between him and the statement taker. His evidence in court was clear, my lord. Which court did you I'm on the statement as well. Maybe I did not clarify that. On, in, in, in the statement, they said that. Not in court. Not in court. Okay. Yes. Because it's the first time I hear this. Yes. Uh, still, my lord, he cannot put Mtoko clearly told the court that there was a miscommunication between him and the statement, the statement taker. Writer. I think it's incorrect then to put what Mtoko basically disavowed to you know to this witness. I think it can be left for argument. Yes. My, my point, my lord, is that. Uh, you know, the witnesses in the house on, on factual observation are seeing, you know, two or three different things on, on very same factual observation of the incident. That was the point I was driving at. I hear you. I was drawing the witnesses' attention to what uh, Twada said in his statements. But this witness continuously says, you know what? Minangzeli entering Ibonish. Yes. I won't comment to to rat out him. Yes. Or tail out him. Maybe I must put to him this uh, assertion. Okay, fine. Say, on, on, on the very same factual observation, the witnesses are telling this court different observation. Why is that so? Do you know? On the last look, I'm not sure if you're going to go in the new Faraz, both Faraz and Gatron. Ask who killed. Oh, Farazi, Abakudumi, Intefanayo, 
Emma at his We are once again, my lord, it's a very general statement. I think council must be specific as to you know what, what is he referring to. You say you must specify what's different factually from witness A, B, C, D, and this witness, if possible. It, it will cause me to go to the record. I'm, I'm reminded, my lord, that it is uh, 20 past 11. That's okay. Okay, let's take a short attempt. Nine. Page 49. Yes, line number one. Line nine. The response by Ms. Kuman, it's line nine. It reads as follows, and I quote. And we then, all of us then stood up. We then pushed them. That is now both the gentleman together with the one that was struggling with Kelly for the door and push both of them to the kitchen. Close quotation. No. It is on, okay, we don't find it yet. The, the record that I read <coughs> earlier, earlier on, it's the I same record. I am in page number 49. Line the end of the 18th of July, 2023. This one, is, this one says the 20th of July, 2022. <coughs> Since it is not long, maybe uh, it is not long. It says, and I quote, I'm reading again, and we then, all of us stood up, we then pushed them, that is now both the gentlemen together with one that was struggling with Kelly for the door, and pushed both of them to the kitchen rotation. Is that how it happened? Then Masu Buzang is some lessons, Palawan, and Tink, then we think that Kigakula is putting ya, who are wins, but. I think, Mr. Gumado, um, you may ask me a question that is pertinent to my statement. When you get to my statement, you can ask me a question. Not that perhaps I'm trying to be evasive, but um, where others are concerned, I would wish for you um, to emphasize on uh, the content of my statement. Okay, I do, I do understand that, but what I'm inviting you to comment, is this what I've just read, how it happened or not? In the Logan, I call Mr. Malunga, Tola with some statement, and I wish you to one one baby, Logan, and Swissy, one Swiss, I want to see what I do. Now, um, how it transpired that will be found in my statement. I'm not, I'm not uh, saying that you shouldn't be uh, uh, perhaps putting it to me, pertaining what uh, to me, or rather, uh, pertaining what they are saying, um, that you can do. But I'm saying that if you expect for me to respond, then you should at least ask me about what is uh, written in my statement. That is to me, I think about What they have written, that should be left in the hands of the court. The court will then decide um, what to make of their statements. Um, I'm just saying that we should focus on the statement that I had provided or that I had finished. Lastly, on page 50 of the transcribed record, the response by Ms. Kumano in his, her evidence in chief, it reads as follows, and I quote, I took the crutch and tried to hit the tall one with it, but could not reach. And then Dumedo took the crutch from me, and I was the one who hit the gentleman with the crutch. And I was the one who hit. And was the one oh. who hit the gentleman. That's I, I think um, what I can um, react to is um, that point that says I also took a crash. That I can react to it. Because I'm party crash in the day kitchen and kumbul. Because I do not remember um, getting hold of a crutch on that day in a kitchen.
Lastly, I just need clarity on this. You will confirm if, if you can and deny if you did not say it. Okay. In your yeah. evidence in chief, did I hear you clearly that your evidence was that after we had finished smoking, you were then invited inside the house by uh, Kelly Kuman to, to say your goodbyes? Yeah, Logan gang Zoktaz of Futia, off your singing as him, Massim Yang bed, was as booze and type singer by him of his son in him. The trailers are weird upon him. Yes, that I can confirm. Yeah. Right, she came and we're standing uh, next to the door and she said that are you now just about to leave and you haven't even uh, said goodbye inside of the house and that's when we went in, in into the house to say our goodbyes yes then yes. i confirmed did you say in your evidence in chief you'll correct me if i'm wrong that before you can or you could enter the house you had a commotion inside the house did you say that no. i've never said that which evidence are you listening to <laughs> The, the very same uh, no. evidence. Yes. First time I hear that. Even yes, Mr. Baloui also says well, that was never said. It's just that I was listening to a recording. I was just <laughs> confirming it, my not uh, if it did uh, uh, mention that in, in his evidence in chief or not. Okay. My job will not sing his way on the Kumbul in Ilang and Iwan Ilang and Ish. Mama Sums is the best in my mother and Jabu. If you can help me hear that, I do not remember, not even on a single day saying that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my daughter. I have no further questions. <laughs>